All right, here we have a 1999 Suzuki DR650, and this is operation. I stripped out my oil pan plug and cracked the case. So I'm going to show you what I read about, what I learned about, and how I'm going to fix this, or attempt to fix it. Um, so first and foremost, I will show you the things that I'm going to use, some of the tools that I'll use to repair this. Uh, JB Weld will be used, um, a piggyback drain plug. Now this is a plus one oversize. Um, and before I put that in, I'm going to have to re-thread the hole to match the threads on my piggyback nut. And just so you know, the uh, threads on a stock Suzuki DR650, this is a 99, are 0.25 thread pitch. And this is 0.5 thread pitch, the piggyback nut. That's not going to work. So once you start putting that in there without re-threading it, um, it just goes in crooked. And that's not good. So I'm going to re-thread it with this 0.5 tap. And um, once I've done that, I will put this in um, and get it tight flush up against the bottom of the case and then I will um, spray it down very nicely with some brake cleaner the whole area uh, that I plan on applying the JB Weld to because I'm then going to use a utility knife I didn't set that out already to scratch up and the area that is clean so I can apply the JB Weld to the bottom of the case, making this nut a permanent fixture. So my stripped uh, oil drain hole and cracked case are no longer a problem. Um, now, yes, I am using JB Weld. No, I've never used it before. Um, but I watched a video how to mix it up, you know, what to use to apply it. And right now I'm thinking that this butter knife is going to be the best tool for me to apply it with to kind of smooth it on evenly uh, to make a nice even weld. Um, also, I know you're thinking, hey, JB Weld, you cracked your case, you're an idiot, don't be a redneck, fix it right. Well, here's the dilemma. This is a 99. This is 2015. So this is a 16-year-old motorcycle. And if we take a peek here at the mileage, well, you can see that. That says 50,961. So she's got a couple miles on her. Looks good. It's nice and clean. Runs very well. But, uh, yeah. I'm not going to... Th this bike is essentially totaled. I, I will have spent more on cases and labor uh, than the bike's worth if I go the do-it-right route. And so this is my do-it-right route. Oh, the other thing that you're going to use uh, when you do this, uh, after I re-thread with my tap... Um, I'm going to dump a quart of the cheapest motor oil I could find through it just to try to get any of the, uh, any of the shavings out of it that might have ended up inside the motor after I re-threaded it with my 0.5 thread pitch tap. So uh, that's the stuff that I'm going to use. The other thing that I might use uh, or that I will use to do... to spin my tap to get it going is uh, a crescent wrench uh, probably a medium sized one probably not too big because uh, I want to go nice and easy and make sure I get it in there straight and do it right the first time um, otherwise these are pretty much all the things that you'll need to do this and a lot of patience um, so the first thing I'm going to do right now is uh, get the bike set up on its center center, center stand and then I will uh, get it anchored so I don't have to worry about knocking it off the center stand on top of myself and then uh, I'll probably put a little bit of oil on the end of this baby and start putting her in okay so here I've started to insert the uh, peaky back nut where it's gonna go into the stripped hole um, it seems to have gone in relatively straight it is still pretty tight going in so um, I've been basically just turning it in a little further each time and then backing it back out and putting it back in 
and working my way slowly deeper and deeper until I get it uh, flush with the bottom of the case. And I'm getting pretty close, so I've got a couple turns left. I'm going to back it out and then uh, turn it back in a little further until I get it all the way in. All right, so um, I've noticed that each time I've backed this thing in and out, and you'll see in these little cracks, there's a fair amount of metal shavings that are collected from going in and out of that hole. So before I insert this for permanent fixture, I'm going to want to make sure that I clean it off very well. So to do that, I'm just going to use that brake cleaner or whatever to just spray it down and force all those little pieces of metal out of there. So. All right, so I've got my hole tapped in my uh, motorcycle. So I've got uh, my old, this is my stock drain plug. This is the new piggyback one I'm going to use. And if you notice, the stock is a little shorter, the thread part. And that made me think, if I cram this thing all the way up in the bottom of my motor, just a little bit of it, it's probably going to be sticking up inside of my oil pan there. And that would create a pool of my oil when I went to drain it, when I pulled this little piggyback nut out. It's meaning I wouldn't be able to effectively get all my old oil out. So, to combat that... I'm going to insert this, but not all of the way. I'm going to leave about one thread showing here on the bottom. And then, of course, yes, that's going to create a gap. But um, And that also means that uh, this is going to stick down even further off the bottom of my case. I'm not too worried about that. I don't go off-road. Um, and my frame actually does sit down um, low enough where I don't think I'd have to worry about it anyways. But at any rate, um, I'm not going to screw this in flush with the bottom of the case because of this being long. Now, I could take a tool and cut it off. I don't have anything right now that would do that effectively. So, like I said, I'm just going to screw it in just short of fully flush with the bottom of the motor. And then, obviously, the gap created here by this not being all the way threaded in will be filled in with the JB Weld. I decided I'm going to go ahead and use this uh, dollar store grill brush. These, these threads are pretty, or these uh, bristles seem like they'll do a pretty good job of scratching the area, the surface area of where the JB Weld is going to go. I'm actually going to go ahead and insert this um, how I want it, and then I'm going to scratch it using... Uh, the uh, dollar store grill brush that I have here and I think that way I can effectively scratch this and the surface at the bottom of the case um, and hopefully I have enough JB weld uh, to <coughs> cover enough to get this to be a permanent fixture so it doesn't come out so that's the next step we're gonna get to that in just All a right, second so um, I got my plug sitting here um, I put it in as far as I wanted to put it in. Yeah, you'll notice it is a little crooked. But um, after I JB weld that, it's not going to make a huge difference. I went ahead and sprayed some carb cleaner on there to get the area where I'm going to apply the JB weld clean. And uh, I'm going to wipe it down, get it nice and dry. And I'm going to take my uh, dollar store grill brush and scratch it as thoroughly as possible all around that area where you see um, that I'll be applying the JB Weld to make this a permanent fixture. That's the next step. So here right, we go. So right now, I'm gonna take uh, my JB Weld and I'm gonna put it on these uh, paper plates. I did two of them just to be sure. I don't think it's gonna be a problem. And then I picked a butter knife as my tool to mix it and apply it. Probably not gonna use the butter knife again, so uh, yeah, so pick something you don't ever want to use again, something you can just get rid of, no big deal. So um, do a little research before you do this. I've never used this before, but it seems pretty straightforward, pretty easy. It's said to use equal parts of each and then mix thoroughly so that um, the color is nice dark gray and there's no swirls or streaks. 
Um, obviously, the better the mixture, the better it's going to work. So I'm going to create two equal lines right here um, on my plate and then just mix it as liberally and as thoroughly as I can. I'm going to do that here in just a second. All right, after playing with the knife and this JB Weld for literally about 30 seconds, I knew that that wasn't going to be the best tool for the job. So I ended up switching over to a small paintbrush about like this. Um, it's uh, just so you can see in comparison, it's, you know, I don't know. That's, that's my finger. There's the paintbrush. So um, pretty small, but it allows you to coat the areas where you want to apply it a little more evenly and with a little bit more control. Um, so here's what it ended up looking like. Yeah, I know it doesn't look amazing, um, but that's, I feel like honestly, that's the best I can do. Um, and I don't want to uh, mess up. I, I really feel like that's about as even as a coat around that bolt as I can get um, to keep it, you know, a permanent fixture. So that's this side. I'll walk around and show you the other side here in just a second. But the paintbrush really helped me, uh, I think, get it in those smaller areas. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, where I just couldn't really do anything with the knife. So hopefully this sets up nicely. Uh, it's I don't know what time it is now, but I want to say it's a little after 9. So hopefully in 24 hours, 9 o'clock tomorrow, I'll come back out and have a nice finished product. And it's not dripped and running all over the place. It's pretty thick. And I'll be honest, the longer I played with it, the thicker I got. And the more difficult it became to get it even and smooth and, and just properly covering the areas that needed to be covered that need to, to be held in place. So once you get it on there... Don't play around. I mean, this stuff does say it takes four to six hours to set and then 15 to 24 to be completely cured before you. All right, there we go. That's the finished product. This is uh, about 17, 18 hours since I applied it and I threw some oil in it. It's ready to rock and roll. I just need to uh, crank it up. I haven't started it in a uh, couple weeks. So that's it. That's how it sits. It's filled in pretty nicely all the way around. Um, so I think we've got a permanent fix. And uh, yeah, if you're in my situation, high mileage bike, not a whole lot of value. You definitely don't want to get the cases changed. And looking back, I definitely would not have done this had there not been a small crack. But uh, otherwise, if you've got a crack like I did, this is probably your best bet. Good luck to you.